Sawyer couldn't stop looking at her, even when he tried to stop, even when he ripped his eyes away and put a whole lot of concentration into listening to what his friend Donnie was saying. And he should have been listening to what Donnie was saying. The things he was telling him were important, life and death important. And Donnie had stuck his neck out to make sure he got a custom Harley he could drive with his prosthesis. He should be listening to every word coming out of his old football buddy's mouth. But he wasn't. In fact, only a few seconds after deciding to pay attention, his eyes drifted back to the black woman on the other side of the dealership, sitting in one of the sales cubicles. She had a piece of paper in her hands, and her face told a story about how much distress it was causing her to read the numbers written on it. On the other side of the desk, Donnie's dad. Donnie Sr., a pot belly with a bad comb over, seemed to be offering her some sympathy. But he was full of shit. Sawyer could tell. Donnie Sr. wasn't a politician, but Sawyer had spent enough time with his dad's cronies to know fake sympathy when he saw it. Know it and hate it. This guy reminded him of every Republican who'd ever offered him a syrupy thank you for his service and sympathy for his leg, while trying to figure out how to use both to the party's advantage. What's he trying to sell her? Sawyer asked Donnie, interrupting him midpoint. Who? Donnie questioned back, looking around the dealership, even though there were only two customers there, Sawyer and the woman he couldn't stop staring at. The crazy librarian's daughter, Sawyer answered. Oh, Stork? Donnie said peering over at her like he'd just realized she was there. Bullshit. Donnie knew the history between her family and Sawyer's. The whole town did. Yeah, Stork, he answered. He'd given her that nickname, he vaguely recalled. She'd been skinny in high school and taller than most girls. Like a stick you'd half expect to disappear from view if she walked behind the wrong wooden electrical post. Shy, too, with a stutter. All too easy to make fun of, really. She'd given him plenty of material to work with. But she wasn't skinny now. She was wearing yoga pants and a t-shirt, which made it easy to tell how nicely she'd filled out over the years. Her skinny frame and flat chest were replaced with a full set of hips and what looked like more than a handful underneath that t-shirt. Instead of the small afro she'd had in high school, she wore her hair in long, thin braids, twisted into an efficient ponytail that hung low on her nape. Donnie squinted, seeming to conduct some kind of special car salesman body language translation of the conversation she was having with his dad. From the looks of it, she's got bad credit, and dad's given her the old, your job's your credit, so we're going to let you have this car with a 20% interest loan speech. Sawyer grunted. Fuck. 20%? You serious? Donnie shrugged. People who don't take care of their credit get used to having to pay a lot more than decent folks who know better. Folks like you and me. Yeah, Sawyer got what he was saying. His father had made a version of that same argument a few years back when his party killed a credit relief bill that came up for a vote. But damn, 20%? That was a goddamn gouge job if he'd ever heard one. Stork seemed to feel the same way because she was shaking her head at Danny's dad before he was even done with his pitch. Sawyer leaned in, wondering if she still stuttered. But then she suddenly stopped, her whole body going still, as if she'd just seen a ghost. Or realized she was being watched. He corrected with a mental curse when she slowly turned her head toward him. Her eyes widened when she spotted who was staring at her. Yeah. She probably hadn't expected to find Sawyer Grant, the best running back Greenlee County had ever seen, staring her down in their small town's only car dealership. Plus, it had been nearly 13 years since he'd set foot in the county his mother's ancestors had founded. Literally one foot, since the Lansdell's docks had relieved him of the other one, along with the bottom half of his leg, six years ago. So yeah, she had lots of reasons to look surprised when she caught him staring at her. I'm probably creeping her out. I should look away.